now we do A Course in Miracles, text chapter 24, The Goal of Specialness, and we move on to 24.4, The Forgiveness of Specialness. Again, another fundamental lesson in understanding how the idea of your special body-mind identity, specialness in other words, has prevented you from maintaining the awareness of being awareness. Awareness is not something we return to. Awareness is not something we achieve. Awareness is not something we gain. Awareness is the essence of ourself. Awareness is the self. Awareness is the Christ mind, aware of being awareness itself, the essence of God's shared being. So the forgiveness of specialness is, is a vital, it's the forgiving of the identity. It's the letting go. Forgive is to forget. So once you've forgiven the identity of specialness, you forget that you ever were a body-mind identity thinking it was special, and you return to the essence of yourself. Forgiveness is the end of special. Only illusions can be forgiven. And then they disappear because to forgive is to forget. Forgiveness is release from all illusions. And that is why it is impossible, but partly to forgive. You can't possibly forgive part of it. It's all you. No one who clings to one illusion can see himself as sinless, where he holds one error to himself as lovely still. And that's often the need for specialness, uniqueness. Look at me, my, my personal situation, no one else has a situation like mine. Everyone has the same. The, the way you tell the story, places, the people, the things and events appear different, but the lesson is always the same. And so he calls it unforgivable. How can I forgive my neighbor? How can I forgive the noise? How can I forgive the politicians? How can I forgive the government? How can I forgive the murderer? How can I forgive the sin? And you make the unforgivable a sin. How can he then give his forgiveness home when he would not receive it for himself? Forgive that you may know you are forgiven. For it is sure he would receive it wholly, the instant that it gave his, that it gave its and thus his secret guilt would disappear, forgiven by himself. Whatever form of specialness you cherish, the divine feminine, the whatever you want to call it, the the, the body mind identity with a race, with a color, with a sex and you think you've been the victim of the world and the victim of an oppression and the victim of a history, the minute you associate to race, you're going to lose the race. That's it. So whatever form of specialness you cherish, you have made it into sin. Inviolate, it stands, strongly defended by your, your identity, with all your puny might against the will of God. Can you succeed? Believing you're special, you're right, everybody else is wrong. Believing that everybody else can remove your peace when you are the peace and love of God. And thus it stands against yourself, your ideas, your enemy, not God's, because God has no enemy. So does it seem to split you off from God, split you off from awareness, and make you separate, stuck in your thoughts, from him as its defender. You would protect what God created not, illusions, the special body mind. And yet this idol, this body mind, that seems to give you power has actually taken away the awareness of the power you are. For you have given your brother's birthright to, leaving him alone, blaming the world, blaming your brothers, and if unforgiven, and yourself in sin beside him, both in misery, before the idol that can save you not. Bodies cannot save. Love is the absence of bodies. So when you blame your brother, when you blame your neighbor, when you blame the noise, when you blame the society, you keep yourself in the illusion. You keep yourself in the ego body mind. Return to silence. Forgive. Forgive, forgive, forgive. It is not you who are so vulnerable. 
and open to attack. Okay. But just a word, a little whisper, or a music, or the sound, or the noise next door, or your noisy neighbor that you do not like, a circumstance that suits you not, or an event that you did not anticipate upsets your world and hurls it into chaos. It's not you that does this. It's not you. It's your ego, and you believe you're your ego. So if a little whisper, a word that you don't like, a circumstance that suits you not, you've gone to this holiday's destination, you've gone into the forest, you expected peace, your neighbors are playing loud music. How dare they? This is a place of silence. You're associating yourself to the special body mind. An event that you did not anticipate. Oh, the world's gone to war. Upset your world and hurls your ego body mind world into chaos. Your identification with body mind. Truth is not frail. Illusions leave it perfectly unmoved and undisturbed. Your awareness is always unmoved and always undisturbed. No matter where you go, your awareness is always with you. You are awareness itself. But specialness is not the truth in you. And that's what upsets you. Whenever you're upset by something in the world, by anyone in your world, it's because you've associated yourself as special. If you think it's your neighbor that's disturbing you, it's you. If you think it's your landlord, that's it's you. It's you, the unreal, keeping your the real from making itself known. It can be thrown off balance by anything, the smallest thing. And of course, you are victim to what rests on nothing can never be stable. And that's why you're unstable and emotionally a wreck, because you're unstable. However large and overblown it seems to be, because you always overblow it, you always make it larger than what it seems. It still must rock and turn and whirl about with every breeze, and it therefore leaves you comfortless because you have not invited the great comforter, the Holy Spirit, into your awareness. Without foundation, nothing is secure. Would God have left his son in such a state where safety has no meaning? No. God's son is safe, resting on him. It is your specialness that is attacked by everything that walks and breathes, or creeps, or crawls, or even lives at all. Any noise that disturbs you is your specialness, your illusion about yourself is being disturbed. If anything in this world disturbs you, know for a fact you're in, you're in the body, mind, ego, identity. You may think you're spiritual. You may think you've done the course. But if the world is disturbing you, you are trapped in ego. You have to practice forgiveness. You have to step above the battlefield. Nothing to the ego is safe from its attack. And it is safe from nothing. Everything disturbs it. Everything attacks it. Everything's an enemy. Everybody's undeserving of being forgiven. It will fall. It will forevermore be unforgiving. But that is what it is. A secret vow that what God wants for you will never be. God wants you to be peaceful. No, I'm not going to let you be peaceful because look at these people that are disturbing my peace. And that you will oppose his will forever. Nor is it possible the two can ever be the same. While specialness stands like a flaming sword of death between them and make them enemies. So every your brothers are to attack you. Your brothers are to disturb your peace. God asks for your forgiveness. God asks for your forgiveness. You would have no separation like an alien will rising between what he wills for you and what you will. God wills for you that you will for yourself perfect peace. They are the same, for neither one wills specialness. They both will peace. How could they will the death of love itself? Yet they are powerless to make attack upon illusions. God cannot attack illusions. God destroy them because he's given you free will. They are not bodies. As one mind, they wait for all illusions to be brought to the surface, into awareness, and left behind through forgiveness. Salvation challenges not even death. And God himself, 
who knows that death is not your will, must say, thy will be done. He lets you play your will because you think it's your will. And when you think it's your will, ego has captured you. And remember this. If you're ever attacking anything in the world, you're in the ego. If anything disturbs your peace, you're in the ego. Above the battlefield. Immediately practice forgiveness. The reason your brother, the world is your savior, is because it's showing you that you're not at peace. And therefore, you need to forgive the things that are triggering you and appearing to take your peace away. When you've forgiven those things, you will return to the peace you are. And more importantly, we blame God for everything. Why did God let this happen? How could God let this happen? How could God create people that are cruel to you? And thus, you also now need to forgive God. Forgive the great creator of the universe. The source of life, of love and holiness. The perfect father of a perfect son. Forgive him for your illusions. Because he didn't take him away from you when you created him. Because he gave you free will. But forgive him because you're still blaming God for all the shit that's happened to you. For your illusions of your specialness. So forgive God for what you've imagined yourself to be. Here is the hell you choose to be your home. Illusions, grievances, and lack of forgiveness. This world, this world is the hell, is the hell you've chosen. Your body is the hell you've chosen to be your home. An illusion. He chooses not this for you. God doesn't want this for you. Ask not, he enters this. Don't ask God to enter into this world. He cannot. He gives his spirit, his memories, so that you may return out of this world. God can't come here and say, you've got to leave this world, this illusion, and return to God. The way is barren to love and to salvation. Yet if you would release your brother, forgive your brother from the depths of hell, you have forgiven him whose will it is you. It is you rest forever in the arms of peace and in perfect safety. And without the heat and malice of one thought of specials to mar your rest, rest in peace, rest in God. To rest in peace is to abide in full awareness of yourself in God. God is spirit and so are you. You abide in God, God abides in you. Forgive the Holy One, the, the specialness he could not give. He couldn't make you special or unique or different from your brother. And that you made instead. So because God wouldn't give you the specialness you needed, you made it yourself. And now you blame God for your specialness, which has bound you to this hell and bound you to suffer. Forgive him. For he didn't pull you out of it. Why didn't he pull you out of it? Because he gave you the free will to choose to stay or to choose to will to return to God's will, which is perfect peace, perfect love. The special ones, the egos, are all asleep surrounded, imagining they are surrounded by a world of loveliness they do not see. Freedom and peace and joy stand there, here, right now, besides the beer on which they sleep and then and call them to come forth and awaken from their dream of death. So just like I've said to you, as above, so below, every night you go to sleep and you find yourself as yourself somewhere else and hundreds of thousands of people are either helping you or hurting you. They're all in your mind, just like we are activities in the dreaming son of God's mind. And when we take recognition of it and take responsibility for being that mind and become the world through the transcendence, through forgiveness, we return knowingly to the Christ mind. And we knowingly know we're part of God, the extension of God's love. Don't you believe you deserve that? Okay. And yet these special ones here now, they are lost in dreams of specialness. They hate the call that would awaken them, the call to love. And they curse God because he did not make their dream reality. And this thing that caused us, that the ego hates. What does the ego hate? What is it? He calls it a void. The ego calls it a void. I'm pointing at my chest, symbolic. The heart, the void, the emptiness that surfaces, that the ego wants to fill with people, places, things, and events. That emptiness is not empty to the ego that does not understand silent stillness, which is the essence of that void. The essence of that void is it's the self. It is the Christ self. It is the God. It's God's heaven. 
And the ego cannot stand stillness. It hates stillness. It hates silence. It needs specialness. And so it calls it a void. That void is devoid of anything. That void is filled with the essence of God's Holy Spirit. But to the ego, it's empty and it avoids it and it fears it and it hates it. And so it curses God. Curse God and die. But not by him who made not death. But only in a dream. So what do we do? We curse ourselves, the dreamer. Open your eyes a little. See the Savior of God gave you that you might look on him, your brothers, your holy relationships, and give him back his birthright, that he is the Son of God. It is yours too. The slaves of specialness, those caught in this dream, will yet be free. Such is the will of God and of his Son, you. Would God condemn himself to hell and to damnation? And do you will that this be done unto your Savior? Do you want your brothers to burn in hell forever? That's what religion teaches us. You know, love, love the man, hate the sinner, but banish him to prison forever so that he are. Everything we do in this world is to punish punitive prison measures as opposed to reform and awaken and bring through. Because every prisoner, I promise you, has been through hell and they acted out the best way they could and became the murderers and the rapists or whatever they became because they themselves have been abandoned and abused like everyone else. They just reacted in the most aggressive way. God calls to you from him to join his will to save you both from this world of how you've made. Look on the print of nails upon his hands that he holds out to your forgiveness. This is the symbolic Christ asking you to return to itself. God asks you mercy, forgiveness on his son that, and on himself. Because when you forgive yourself, you forgive his son. It's not forgiving Jesus out there. It's forgiving yourself, God's son. And thus deny yourself and your father not. Deny them not. They ask, but of they ask, sorry, they ask of you, but that you that your will be done, that you be freed of this illusion. They seek your love, that you may love yourself. The seeking, what seeks its love? Love seeks itself. Love not your specialness instead of them, the Christ that you are, which is the essence of God. The print of nails is on your hands as well. Forgive your father. It was not his will that you be crucified. It was your will that you be crucified. And it's your will that you crucify yourself. Every single moment you have a grievance against the world, you attack yourself, you attack your brother, you attack the circumstance, the place, the activity, the event. Any attack thought immediately pulls you out of knowing yourself as that which is the will of God. Every attack thought you crucify the self, the son of God, in self and all others. No more attack thoughts. When the attack thought comes, to whom does this thought appear? See it, total clarity, practice forgiveness. Until it no longer triggers you. And keep practicing. Yes, it's not easy. Yes, it takes time. But what's easier, that you keep suffering for the rest of your life or that you practice this now and in a couple of days or weeks or years, depending on how intensely you practice this, how willing you are to seek you first the kingdom above all else, this will be removed from you and you will be lifted. And you'll never have to repeat the reincarnation cycle again, the illusionary projection back into form again, because you'll return to the Christ mind where you abide silently, knowingly in God's essence. I'll stop there. We'll do some